GBC fam. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, by the time this material gets sent out, uh, I hope to be fishing with my family up north somewhere. Um, so I'm recording this ahead of time and hopefully nothing too crazy has happened between uh, now and then. Um, or I guess between now and then, uh, depending on your perspective on this. Um, <laughs> all right. We are continuing to build on the idea um, of what it means to love and obey God. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, um, I said we can think of that as uh, loving and obeying as sort of the two rails, or, or two rails of the train track, I guess, of the Christian life, right? Um, and this week we arrive at uh, the discussion of the Ten Commandments. Um, which are sometimes called the Ten Words of the Law or simply the Law in the Bible when you come across them. And believe it or not, we're actually, uh, we're gonna spend uh, seven more weeks on this topic, um, during which time we're gonna have the opportunity to dig into each one of the specific commandments um, in, in far greater detail and flesh them all out. Um, and obviously there's gonna be some overlap along the way, but my hope is that each week uh, we'll continue to build on the blocks that we laid the week before so that by the time uh, we get to the end of this, you are all going to be experts in the law. <laughs> Alright, uh, but for today anyway, I want to simply uh, help you understand the context or um, sort of the situation in which the Ten Commandments were given uh, because this can help us understand uh, what they're for, how, how we're meant to read them, how we're meant to think about them. Um, but first, let's read our question and answer together, all right? Uh, question eight. What is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? Answer. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not covet. All right, kids. Do any of you know where in the Bible we can find the account of God giving the Ten Commandments to his people? If you said Exodus, you get one point. Um, but if you said Exodus 20, you're a genius. All right, because that's where it's found. And here's a bonus question. Uh, do any of you remember what happens in the first half of the book of Exodus? What, what major event or, or series of events uh, is the book named after? The Exodus, that is correct. God miraculously rescues his people out of slavery in Egypt, brings them through the Red Sea on dry ground, and then into the wilderness um, where he takes care of them and provides for them, and eventually they wind up at the foot of Mount Sinai where they set up camp, okay? And it's here at Mount Sinai that Moses goes up to the mountain, into the mountain rather, uh, to meet God. And the purpose of this meeting is to establish or to reestablish uh, a covenant between God and the people of Israel, all right? And a, a covenant uh, can be thought of or summarized, I guess, as a very serious promise or oath, all right? And it's actually the most serious kind of promise because in the ancient Near East, when this story took place, uh, covenants were fairly common. And in a covenant, if you fail to deliver on your end of the promise, you had to forfeit your own life. All right, so covenants were serious things. And the promise that God makes with Israel can be summarized this way. He says, I will be your God and you will be my people. All right, but the problem is that Israel didn't really know much about this God at this point. All right, they had been slaves in Egypt for over 400 years. And during that time, uh, they would have been indoctrinated. They would have been taught about um, Egypt's gods. They were polytheistic. They believed in many gods, right? And so 
they would have been really steeped in Egyptian religion and they would have not known very much about the covenant God of Israel. Um, certainly multiple generations in, right? It's possible that at the beginning, the older folks uh, passed down stories about how uh, this God had made a promise, a covenant with Abraham um, that he would uh, grow his descendants into a great nation and that they were going to inherit the land of Canaan. Um, that's possible. Um, and they certainly got a taste of God's power over all of creation during the 10 plagues in Egypt and certainly during the parting of the Red Sea and in God's miraculous provisions for them in the wilderness. Um, but other than that, they, they didn't really know how to be in a relationship with God. They didn't really know who God was. And so God gives them the Ten Commandments to teach them about who he is and how they were to be his people. All right? Uh, they were meant, the Ten Commandments were meant first and foremost to be instructive rather than a simple list of things they weren't allowed to do. Um, and kids, do you remember how Jesus summarized all the law and the prophets from Matthew 22, um, as we've been talking about for the last two weeks? Um, if you do, you can say it with me. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, right? That's what Jesus says. That's his summary. And now if we look at the Ten Commandments, um, we're going to see this. Commandments 1 through 4 are all about loving and worshiping God exclusively, right? He says, you shall have no other gods beside me. Just me. I'm the only God, the one true God. It's exclusive, right? Um, building on that, he says, don't make images out of me. Don't try to confine me to um, images of created things. I'm the creator of all of it. I'm way bigger than all of it. You can't confine me like that. Don't, don't worship these substitutes, right? And the third commandment, uh, don't misuse my name. I am holy, God is saying. I'm, I'm so much more holy than you realize. There's power in that name that you don't understand. So don't, don't play uh, fast and loose with it. Um, and then fourth, honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. Right? So these are all practical ways to show single-minded love and devotion and worship to God. Um, and, and, and the way Jesus sets it up, uh, rather than as the Ten Commandments state, you shall not, Jesus says you shall. So he takes a negative command and he simply restates it in a positive way. Um, but now look at Commandments 5 through 10, right? Honor your mother and father. No murdering, no adultery, uh, no stealing, no false witness or lying, and no, no coveting. Um, and these commands are all practical applications of the command to love your neighbor as yourself. Right? And so the list ultimately is a picture of the standard of holiness required to be in God's presence to be with him, to be in relationship with him as his people. Um, the Ten Commandments were meant to keep God's people safe with him. Um, and so you see, there's nothing, there's nothing arbitrary or random about this list of commandments, as some people think. Um, God is showing his people then and now what it means to be his image bearers. Uh, what it means to be his representatives in the world, what it means to be his children. All right. And if you turn to Exodus 20, uh, where this, the, this list of commands is first given, uh, you see how God actually introduces them. In Exodus 20, verse 1, God says, or uh, the writer of Exodus, rather, says, And God spoke all these words, saying, and here's God, I am the Lord your God. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Therefore, right, or because of this fact, you shall have no other gods before me. And he begins the list. So the whole list is predicated on the fact that I am your God. I am the God. Now this is what you need to know about me, and this is what you need to know about you in relationship to me. Okay, and of course, there's lots more rules and commands that come as God um, elaborates on the specifics of what community life with him is going to look like 
Um, and in the midst of outlining a number of these things, in one particular list in Leviticus 11, um, God says this, and this is uh, Leviticus 11, verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. Does that introduction sound familiar? Right? For I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. We, as God's people, are meant to reflect his holiness and his goodness in the world as his image bearers. And the Ten Commandments are designed to reveal the standard of that holiness and goodness to us. All right. There is so much more to say, but... <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there this week because you have a big task this week, actually, of memorizing these Ten Commandments. And I look forward to the day when we get to see each other and you can show me your skills by reciting the Ten Commandments to me from off by heart. And I will be super impressed. All right. Um, so that's all for this week. And I can't wait to get back to this with you all next week. All right. Take care, guys.